Hello and welcome to this Let's Get Sassy interview with Christian Klepp. We talked about B2B podcasting, LinkedIn marketing, and a bunch of other interesting topics that I hope you enjoy as much as we did. Welcome again and hope to see you in further editions of Let's Get Sassy. So we are joined today by Christian Klepp. He's a co-founder and director of client engagement at Einblick Consulting. Christian, thank you for, for accepting our invitation today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on the show. All right. So just to start this conversation, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, B2B branding. Um, so you're, 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 you're the founder and entrepreneur of a B2B branding and marketing agency. What has been the, the hardest part of starting a B2B focused project? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, you know, first of all, we'd like to think of ourselves more as a consulting firm uh, rather than an agency. And to answer your question, um, I would say it really depends on the case itself because, you know, it's uh, the circumstances and requirements um, for clients are different. Um, I would say in many cases, not all, but in many cases, there are a lot of misconceptions around what branding actually is, right? And especially in the B2B tech and SaaS space, um, there's always the question about, okay, how can companies benefit from branding? Um, because it's, it's uh, in many ways also quite an intangible thing, right? And, you know, when we, when we say benefit, we're always talking about ROI, how success can be measured and so on and so forth, right? And it's always a question about clearing up those misconceptions because a lot of people believe that branding, you know, they always jump to the visual aesthetics of it, right? So designing a logo on a website and so forth, right? But we, we know um, that, you know, branding is so much more than that, right? It's, it's, uh, it's about, um, how customers, how partners, how employees, and how the market perceive you as a company. So it's a collect uh, collection of uh, perceptions initially, right? So, and, and there's a lot of things that go into that because it's like, you know, how your company is positioned, what is your unique advantage um, over other market contenders, and most importantly, why potential customers or companies out there in the market, why should they choose you? What is it that you have that uh, would make them select you over uh, somebody else. So it's a it's a comes down to the way that you package um, your approach, the way that you package your solutions, and the way that you package uh, your your products. So in many cases, right, um, when we're starting out with B two B projects, I mean we're dealing with companies that are very uh, sales driven, and that's perfectly understandable, right? Because if you don't generate revenue, <clears throat> then why why does your company exist, right? The problem. With that approach from what we've seen and in our experience is if the company has only this as their focus, right, and they invest little in branding and in marketing, what happens over time, and we've seen it happen, is that the salespeople inadvertently have to become marketers themselves. And why do I say that? It's because when they are doing cold outreach to potential prospects, as many of them are, these prospects has never heard of that particular B2B tech or SaaS company before. So how do they, again, how do they position that company in the minds of these prospects, right? So it's challenging. It, it was challenging in some cases to start uh, with a project um, if you don't uh, have the right strategy in place. So we are always very much um, about focusing on a strategy first approach. And that requires you to take a step back conduct the relevant uh, analysis and research and use a different approach to tackle the business challenges. Okay, that's interesting. We, we also mm -hmm. wanted to talk to you about a topic that we know you're very passionate about, uh, yeah. and that's podcasts. So right. uh, we know you're into podcasts. You have a very interesting podcast. We can share the link afterwards here on, on, on these posts. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us what uh, B2B, marketing, B2B marketers on a mission is all about? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yes, you're right. Uh, I'm, I'm passionate about podcasts, as I'm sure you are as well. <laughs> it's kind of like the new uh, radio of this day and age, right? And if it's done properly, um, it's a great way to connect with like-minded individuals who are members of your target audience, who can also become your potential partners. So it opens up a lot of doors of opportunity. Now, with regards to uh, um, our podcast, so uh, B2B Marketers in the Mission, uh, our mission is clear. We want to disrupt and alter the way the professionals think about B2B marketing, 
right? Because let's face it, the world has changed, right? I mean, just look at the past 12 to 15 months, how much has changed in the way that we work, in the way a lot of things have migrated online. And I think it was also about time that B2B has become more digitized. So we as marketers need to adapt with these changes, right? And not fight them, right? We need to embrace these changes. So what we're all about is bringing on different uh, professionals for across the B2B marketing spectrum. So experts in the respective disciplines and um, have conversations with them. And through these conversations, provide our listeners with actionable insights and help them like uh, I'm, I'm going to quote the, um, the Apple slogan here, think differently. All right. So when they, after they finish listening to our episode, they walk away and say, Hey, you know what? I, um, I didn't actually think about it that way. Let me, uh, let me go and have a look. Let me, let, let's go and try something, uh, something else. Uh, let's go, let's go and try it out. Let's see, let's see what we can do differently. Right. So I've had the privilege um, of having some great insightful and thought provoking conversations uh, with B2B marketers across different disciplines from different parts of the world. And they provided some really great insights. Right. And uh, the other thing also is um, I want to encourage through these conversations, diversity of thinking. Because B2B marketers from all over the world will have different ways of tackling the same problem. And I think it's always good to see things from a more balanced perspective. Okay. And talking about podcasts and B2B strategy, yeah. uh, just to follow up on, on this question, uh, mm -hmm. do you think podcasts are going to play a huge role in the B2B world nowadays? Are they, I mean, are they going to be a must in the marketing mix of B2B companies? I definitely think that, again, if done properly, podcasting can be a crucial component uh, to the overall strategy. And I truly believe that at this current stage, where we are right now in the in terms of the podcasting, uh, they call it the podcasting wave, right? At least in the V two B marketing space, this is still a a channel that has not realized its full potential yet. And um, I don't mean that in a negative way. I actually think that um, that there's a lot of opportunity for growth and improvement of that particular channel, right? Um, you're probably going to get, to answer your second question, you're probably going to get different numbers depending on where you look. But um, there's a lot of researches uh, that have been conducted by companies like Nielsen. Um, I, I, I got some statistics off insiderintelligence.com. So... There's anywhere between uh, one to two million uh, podcasts out there in the world today, right? But if you're looking for specific topics, let's just say B2B SaaS or B2B tech, B2B marketing, uh, that obviously that number is going to narrow down a little bit, right? So again, there's potential there, right? And just in terms of <clears throat> the US, the US market alone, the number of monthly podcast listeners for this year uh, will increase by 10.1%, right? year on year. And podcasting is also growing outside um, outside the US market. I mean, like look at Latin America, for example, or even the Asia Pacific region, right? Um, I, I think the last time I, I, I heard South Korea had a growing number of, um, you know, podcast listeners and podcasts being put out, right? So by the end of 2025, it's estimated that there'll be about 144 million uh, monthly podcast listeners in the US. And because of that, um, people will also uh, eventually uh, spend more time on podcasts, granted that they are, um, you know, the content that, that's being put out is quality, right? So I'm not, so with these statistics, I would say there's, um, you know, there's plenty of, uh, there's plenty of potential there. I'm not entirely sure if I would go to, as far as to say it's a must. Um, again, it really depends on uh, um, different factors. Like, for example, who are you, you know who's your audience? Who are your listeners? How do they consume content? Right, because it's about the people that you're that you're uh, trying to um, influence or trying to reach out to. Right. Um, there's still a lot of resistance uh, from what I've seen. Uh, you know, I've had conversations with uh, companies in the past year, and there's still resistance from B2B companies when it comes to podcasting, right? And what I mean, what I mean by resistance is they are um, hesitant to launch their own podcast. Why? Because there's a lot of questions back to the old ROI question, right? Because if we invest X amount in putting out a podcast, is that going to guarantee us um, this much in sales, this much in conversions, and this much in revenue, right? Um, 
and and you know they they'll go after metrics like okay how many downloads did we get for this episode and I quite frankly think that that's the wrong approach, right? Um, I would say at least from my own experience and this is just my own opinion um, I wouldn't like recommend launching a podcast with the expectation that you're going to have this revolving door of leads. Um, in my experience, it takes a longer time. Um, you have to be able to play the long game, right? Um, and most importantly, uh, don't start a podcast because you want to generate leads. Start a podcast because you want to add value. You want to educate. You want to motivate. You want to inspire your target audience. You want to build genuine connections and partnerships. I, I, I would say that's why I started my podcast, and that's how I think um, other companies should go about doing it. Um, and also, most importantly, how do you stay top of mind? Uh, how do you want people to remember you when they tune into your podcast, when they tune into podcasts like this one, Let's Get Sassy? How do you want them to remember you, right? And there's other things that you, you know, as a B2B company, you need to remember um, before you even consider launching a podcast, right? So there's a couple of questions that you have to, um, you have to be able to answer, right? So one is, What's your strategy? So what are you hoping to achieve by launching this podcast? What are the objectives? And how do you um, how do you intend to achieve those objectives? Who is your target audience? Who are your potential listeners? And why are these the people that you want to influence and reach out to, right? Um, back to the question um, I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, how do you want the audience to remember you? So it's about positioning your show, positioning your brand in the minds of the target audience. And how can you add value to them? And what kind of impression do you want to leave? Um, and I think the last one, which is um, advice that a friend of mine gave me, is um, before you launch your own podcast, why don't you try being a guest on other podcasts, right? To see uh, to see what it's like, and also to see if you, you know you uh, it, this is something that uh, you think um, matches uh, not just your expectations, but matches the overall goals that you want to um, attain. All right, Christian, again, thanks for accepting our invitation today. It's always a pleasure to have conversations about marketing with people that, that knows about the, the field, that it's passionate about B2B initiatives, for example. So again, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me and uh, thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, and thank you so much for the artwork as well. <laughs> I loved it. Mm -hmm.